You are wasting precious time with your dog to mentally enrich them. They never eat out of a bowl. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Freya and Bela's channel. Yeah, you're Bela. My name is Marissa. I'm the dog mom around here. This is Bela, my seven month old golden retriever puppy. And Freya is off taking a nap somewhere. And she's my two year old Australian shepherd. She will run out here once she actually hears me messing with all of this. Because behind me, I have all of our enrichment feeders. And there's a lot of different like categories of them, but I'm going to walk you guys through them all today and just show you all of the things that my dogs eat out of because they never eat out of a bowl. They don't have dog bowls. <laughs> <laughs> they have fun stuff that makes them think and use their mind and mentally enriches them, makes mealtime last longer, and allows them to do what dogs do best, which is sniff and forage and, you know, dig a little bit and use their snoots. And as Bela is showing you, it's way more exciting to eat this way than just shoving your dog's food into a bowl and handing it to them. They finish it in three seconds and then mealtime is over. You are wasting precious time with your dog to mentally enrich them. So I just wanted to show you guys all the things that we use instead of bowls to give you some ideas and of course everything will be linked down below so if there's anything that you like you guys can check it out down below there's a lot of good stuff and a lot of different stuff but I feel like there's so many other things out there I have so many things on my Amazon wish list of more like mental enrichment feeders because you can never have enough because a question that I actually do get a lot when I talk about like enrichment feeders and food puzzles and stuff like that is doesn't your dog get bored of them what happens when they figure out the puzzle is it even worth it anymore and I would most definitely say yes 100% it's still worth it but they can also get bored of them if you're not using these tools correctly. I would not give your dog the same food puzzle every morning, every night, every day. You switch it up and that's why we have a bunch of different ones so they're not using the same puzzle or the same enrichment every day and they probably only hit it like every other week because we have so many to kind of cycle through. And it is specific to your breed and how like smart your doggo is because Freya is an Australian Shepherd. She usually catches on so quickly but Bela, I have to physically teach her how to do it which is so funny. So every dog is different but I wouldn't recommend using the same thing every day and multiple times in a row and whatnot because they can't get bored of it and then it defeats the purpose of it being like mentally enriching and then there's one that is like the grand one of them all that I will save until the end that you should most definitely be doing with your puppy or dog of any age and it is the best mental enrichment feeder for meal times we're gonna dive in with the newest addition to my collection and it's actually one that I haven't even unboxed yet but that I'm super excited to and it is from Enjoya who is actually the sponsor of today's video so thank you so much to Enjoya for sending us over some more goodies this is not my my first time working with them. I absolutely love Enjoya. We have two other things from them, which I will show you, but I'm excited about this new one, which is a Lavender Garden Snuffle Mat. I will link Enjoya's website down below along with the items that I have from them, of course, with our discount code and your special links. It comes in this little roll, which I think is so freaking cute and actually like a little wrap. Wow, and this is gonna get real big. Oh, I'm so excited. This is absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, it looks like a tiny little garden, which is so cute. There's so many nooks and crannies to stuff your treats into or your dog's kibble. And there's different areas on this entire snuffle mat that is gonna be harder for your dog to find food in and areas that are going to be easier, like in this plant me section. It has a flippable hidden pocket, so that'll be super fun to see the dogs work through versus the larger snuffle mat section and the smaller flower-shaped snuffle mat section. It also comes with an interactive shovel, which I think ties the whole garden theme together and it's so freaking adorable. But there is a section or a small pocket that you can put treats inside the shovel, which again, makes it a little bit harder for your dog to find all of its food. What's amazing about this one and the other ones that we have from Enjoya is they are machine washable. Recommended to be washed in cold water and air dried, but I do throw them in the washer all the time whenever they just get a little bit too dingy after a while. And they always come out good as new. So that convenience factor is a big thing for me. It is also made out of 100% polyester, so it's super soft on your dog's noses. It's not anything rough that's going to cause like abrasions or sores on the nose or the mouth area. And I said that this wasn't the only one that I have from Enjoya. And the second one that I have is this pink and teal and yellow one, which again has different levels of difficulty all throughout. A lot of different areas to hide treats in and has been well used and well loved over the years. And because I can just throw it in the washer and air dry it, it comes out good as new. Like I said, Bela is seven months old now, but she's been 
using this one specifically since she was a tiny, tiny puppy and Freya showed her how it was done and it was the cutest thing ever to watch her learn how to use these things. But it's not all just snuffle mats. So another enrichment toy that we have from Enjoya is this carrot patch. Again, has been well loved throughout the years. You of course wanna watch your dog with any toy or you know snuffle mat and whatnot because depending on your puppy, they could chew it. And Bela was in a very chewy stage of her puppyhood and kind of chewed it up a little bit. But it's very much still usable and super freaking cute. So in this little set, which we've also had some carrot casualties. <laughs> The carrots are planted within the toy, so you're able to put treats at the bottom of it, as well as on the side of the carrots, there's little pockets that you can stick treats on. So once they pull the carrot out, they can get the food at the bottom, and then they have to work at the carrot itself to get even more food out. You can also be really sneaky and not put any food underneath one of the carrots and, you know, change it up, put different treats under different carrots. And those are the three things that we have from Enjoya so far, and that, again, have been well used and well loved. So of course, I will link all three of those down below, especially their brand new lavender garden set. I just think it's the cutest thing in the whole entire world, but we have a lot of other things to show you, so let me dive in. Some of the easy ones that I'm sure you have heard of before. A Kong. This is a normal Kong. We have about like six of these, but I'm just going to show you this one because I'm sure you've heard of a Kong and you've seen one. There's different sizes of them that you can use for the different size of your dog, and I feel like people always think that you can only use peanut butter in these, and that's not the case. You can use this for pretty much anything, including your dog's food in meal times. So of course we have filled these with peanut butter and put them in the freezer, amazing snack kind of enrichment. But if you take your dog's kibble and soak it in some water to make it really soft, you can put that inside of your Kong and freeze that for mealtime. And if it's a nice hot summer day, it's also a great way to cool your pup down if you're hanging out outside and you want a snack or something. So a Kong, get you one of these. Other easy ones that I'm sure you've heard of are just, you know, slow feeders in general. I have a couple different kinds. This one was Bela's puppy slow feeder. And if you have a small dog or a puppy, this one was great because it is smaller, of course, but it's also bendable it's not too hard so it's not gonna hurt their teeth or their mouth while they're learning how to use this because the other two that I have are large ones and they're plastic and hard and I just didn't want her hurting her mouth and her mouth was super small so she really couldn't get into all of these deep grooves like in this huge one that we have these are your traditional slow feeders which you can use in multiple different ways you can of course just pour the kibble in and serve like that it's going to help slow down mealtime if your dog seems to like gulf down food and then potentially throw it up afterwards or just eats too fast but you can also again rehydrate hydrate that dried out kibble by putting warm water into your slow feeder, letting that kibble soak it up, give it to your dog as is, or again, throw that into the freezer to make mealtime last even longer and help cool them down. There's so many ways to jazz up slow feeders and have meal toppers and enrich the dog's food in general with these kinds of meal enrichment tools, but we're just starting with the basics here. Another fun one that I feel like is commonly known of, but maybe not, is the West Paw. They come in a lot of different sizes and I have two here, and I know this one seems like so small, like what would eat out of this? However, these are really awesome tools because they actually go inside of each other like a little puzzle piece to again, make meal time more enriching, make it a food puzzle, make it something that their brain has to work through and they have to work to get the food out. So just like with the slow feeders, you can just pour the kibble into this and let them knock it around and the food starts to fall out of the tiny holes that you see on the side. Or again, we can amp it up and put your dog's kibble in here, soak it in some water, plug those holes. I usually use peanut butter just as an easy thing and you can still lock it in to make it a frozen puzzle and just like the slow feeders there are tons of ways that you can use these west paws as well but we're just going over the basics <laughs> now this looks like a giant kong but it's better than that so it does have a little hole on the side and this is called a wobbler or a topple i've heard it called different things but essentially it has a weighted bottom and a top that unscrews so you can put your dog's kibble inside and then your dog can knock it around it'll tip over dump some treats out and then stand back up and they kind of have to play with it to get all the food out. However, if you want to amp it up a little bit, I put small toys inside of here to cover that hole a little bit so that way food isn't just pouring out and that's how you make it a little bit harder. Which going back to the original question at the beginning of the video, does your dog get bored? What happens if they know how to use it? My dogs know how to use this, but you can amp it up a little bit, make it a little bit harder for them by switching it up sometimes. A fun food puzzle that I have, which we have had a casualty for and have a missing bone, is this right here, which I got for Freya when she was a puppy. And again, I just love seeing her little brain work it through it when she was so tiny. But the red pieces open up little doors where you can put treats inside. The bones come completely out so you can hide treats and food underneath. But once you remove the bone, you can slide those red pieces around and hide even more treats underneath it. So this is something that amps up that difficulty level for your dog. And when you are searching for food puzzles specifically, they usually have a level listed. So you know if it's a level one versus a 
level five and how hard it'll be for your dog. This next enrichment tool is a giant rubber ball that says Snoop on it. I'm gonna have to see what it's actually called and of course link it down below for y'all. But it has a piece in the middle that is folded in that you can fold out to put treats inside. And then when you close that down, it makes it harder to get those treats out. They're able to bat around, play with, and work to get those treats to come out or fall out for them. I would put it in the same category as the Kong topple, but just a different way to do it. This next enrichment tool might seem weird to you and you're gonna be like, well, what the heck are you gonna use that for? One of my meal enrichment tools is a towel. But with towels or blankets, you can create mental enrichment games and food puzzles for your dogs super easily by sprinkling some food inside of the towel and rolling it up. And that would be level easy. And then you can make it really hard by tying that into a knot or multiple knots and seeing your dog's brain work to undo that knot and try to get into that blanket. There are so many other mental enrichment and food puzzles out there, of course. These are just the ones that we have in the household right now. And as I get more, of course, I'll always show them on this channel. I love doing dog hauls and trying these kinds of things for my dogs. So keep an eye out. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below. And I said that I was gonna save the most important one, or I guess I should have said even just the easiest one for last, and the one that is the most mentally enriching for them, and one that will help connect you and your dog and create that bond. Getting rid of the dog food bowls and all the food puzzles, if you can't afford any of that, because they do cost money, of course, you can hand feed your dog and use meal times as training times. I do that with my puppies for months. Like once I get them at eight weeks old, up until they're probably about six months old or so, I am hand feeding every single meal and using these mental enrichments more as like treats throughout the day because I don't want to waste meal time and their drive when I could be using that to teach them skills and tricks and how to sit and how to lay down and go to their crate and positively associate certain things, take them on excursions to socialize with other dogs or with people and loud noises. There's so many ways to use meal time as a training tool. And if you're really trying to tire your dog out, mental enrichment is the way to go. Along with all of these snuffle mats and puzzles and topples and slow feeders, I hand feed a lot, we train a lot. All of that to say, my dogs do not eat out of dog bowls. And these are all the things that we do instead. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope all of this was helpful for you. I hope you liked something. I hope you learned something. And I hope your dog was watching this video being like, please get me that. <laughs> Cause something super funny. I get a lot of DMs on Instagram of videos or pictures that you guys send me of your dogs watching these videos. And it's the cutest thing in the entire world. So thank you again to Enjoya for sponsoring today's video and sending us their brand new lavender garden mat. It's the cutest thing ever and I'm so excited to add something to our collection and into the rotation. It's much appreciated when you guys support the businesses that support us and especially small businesses that support us because that's what I love to support myself. But now all the dogs are sitting around me staring at me because I have all of this out and it's almost dinner time so I need to feed them. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I love you guys so much and I will see you next week for another dog vlog. Bye!